pipe wire confuses the crap out of me. All right, so in the old days, mm. you know, which is like yesterday, <laughs> you know, uh, Xorg handled stuff that was put on your screen. Yes. That's what Xorg does. And Pulse Audio was your audio server. Yes. It, it puts your audio thing. But Pipewire is not that. P mm. Pipewire does put audio out to your peripherals, but it also deals with stuff that's on screen. Uh, and I think that, that most people, like you said, not going to care. Because most people, like my dad uses Ubuntu on his laptop. Oh, wow. He doesn't give a crap. Yeah, he doesn't care what he uses. He just wants to use Chrome. Like he lives in a he lives in Chrome. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what operating system he uses. And so he's using Wayland all the time. He doesn't know what he doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. Um and that's gonna be most people's, you know, experience with Wayland and could because Ubuntu and now Fedora and uh, eventually every distribution is going to be shipping their default desktop environment with Wayland. You know, yes. whether they use KDE or GNOME, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be the default thing very, very soon, and it already is for basically everybody, mm. right? Most people who don't make YouTube videos and don't never have never used OBS in their lives, they don't care. As long as it works and will play a YouTube video mm. well, and will allow you to put output to your headphones, that's going to be perfectly fine for them. So in that case, Wayland and Pipewire, which Ubuntu is going to be shipping with by default in the next release, right? It's going to be fine for vast majority of people. It's when you do extra things, like yes. when you record your screen or you have extra peripherals like an audio, you know, an audio uh, a mixer or something, you know? It's when you have those things that it adds that added cl complexity that, I mean, like you said with your example with uh, Pipeware last year, mm. I still have the feeling that Pipeware's in a situation where that could still happen. You know, sure. Well, if it feels right now like it's very stable, mm -hmm. but I'm there's always this worrying thing in the back of my head that they're going to come out with a update that just breaks everything, and I'm going going to be screwed. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and part of that is because it is very new, and some of it is that it, I don't. If I don't, <laughs> this is probably just my own. Um, sense of the project, but it feels like they're trying to do so much. It, like, it feels like anything that Wayland can't handle yet, mm -hmm. Pipewire's, you know, being given that responsibility. That and so, like, XDG portals. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to talk about XDG portals. I hate those damn things. <laughs> um, the, 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 all right, so they use. The XDG portal, the only experience I have with XDG portals mm -hmm. is. The, um, like the file pickers and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the GNOME file picker that mm. is included with the, the XDG portal dash GNOME, whatever it is in Fedora, is the most broken piece of thing outside of KDE. Mm -hmm. It is astonishingly broken. Like, I, I don't understand how you can have a, a file picker in this day and age and not... It, it, all it does is it opens up a dialog box and lets you choose a file, right? Sure. Uh, but... It's broken. <laughs> like, it doesn't work. And it, it's the same thing for the save dialog. Like, if you, you want to name a file with the, XD, with the GNOME version of the XDG portal, it, the, like, you start typing in the name of the file that you want to save, it opens up search. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so you can't actually name it. You have to type your name in the search box, cut and paste it out of there, and then paste it back into the, the name uh, text box. <laughs> it's n absolutely nuts. Like, so... Um, there were there were solutions online for this, mm -hmm. and they were all overly complicated. So I was like, "F this crap! I'm deleting it." Mm -hmm. Like I deleted the XTG Portal Dash Gnome and installed the KDE version. I was like, <laughs> that way I can just use the QT ver version of the file pickers and save dialogs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just as bad, but not broken. So um, that's my only experience with it so far, and and that's the reason why I didn't. You know, just I don't know if. It, it, it's a good idea when it comes like it, it's a good idea for other reasons like mm. the whale and stuff but when it comes to like the the file pickers like at least now with the way that they're doing it it's not like each application is built in their own thing and everyone's doing their own i mean like uh and it's still that way because a lot of software developers just don't care like uh gimp still uses its own yeah. thing that they develop like um uh firefox doesn't seem to like 
there's there's have been certain situations on certain distributions where Firefox will switch between different ones on the same distro. So sometimes you'll get the GTK one, sometimes you'll get the QT one, and it doesn't know what the hell it's doing. Um, so that whole situation, but at least now that they can use those things separately and it's kind of system wide, that mm -hmm. makes a whole lot more sense than the way they used to do it. But I don't know. Um, Linux is broken. <laughs> well, with the, um, you brought up Pipewire doing too much before. Originally, Pipewire was just going to be called Pulse Video, and it was going to be the video, it was going to be like a, um, it was going to be used to handle like webcams, things like that. And then the project expanded over time and eventually sort of encompassed the entire audio side as well. That's, that's how that happened. And... I don't know, I, I kind of understand it being like that. Having a single thing managing your all of your media stuff, 